Virtual talks are just one of the several ways the NMC is working to engage over 40,000 managers and aspiring leaders across the country on topics of importance to you. Des conversations virtuelles est un des multiples moyens que la CNG rejoint plus de 40 000 gestionnaires et aspirants gestionnaires à travers le pays et couvrant les différents sujets qui vous sont importants. For today's session, we will be discussing leadership in difficult times with our special guest and Atlantic ADM NMC champion, Gerald Nowlin, and our host, NMC Atlantic Regional Manager, Michael McGuinness. Aujourd'hui, nous discuterons du leadership en temps difficile avec notre invité spécial et champion régional des sous-ministres adjoints en Atlantique pour la CNG, Daryl Nowlin. La conversation sera animée par le gestionnaire régional de la CNG en Atlantique, Michael McGuinness. Bonne semaine nationale de la fonction publique à tous. Happy National Public Service Week to all. I know we are all looking forward to an engaging session, so without further delay, je vais céder la parole à Michael pour présenter Daryl et lancer notre session. OK, merci beaucoup, Nathalie. Bienvenue tout le monde. Good morning and good afternoon to all our participants from coast to coast. Merci à tous et tous pour nous joindre pendant ce semaine nationale de la fonction publique. Um, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the NMC Managers Convect Virtual Talks, focusing on leadership. On est très chanceux d'avoir avec nous aujourd'hui Daryl Nowlin pour cette conversation virtuelle de la communauté nationale des gestionnaires de la sujet de leadership. Uh, Daryl has served as ADN champion here in Atlanta, Canada for the NMC for the past six years uh, and is currently the VP of Policy, Programs and Communications at the Atlanta Canada Opportunities Agency. Um, before we start, I just want to reiterate, reiterate, reiterate excuse me, Natalie's request that everyone um, please uh, turn off your cameras and mute your uh, microphones. S'il vous plaît, désactivez vos, uh, vos caméras. Um, before we start, I also want to note that this is a bilingual session. Et nous vous invitons de sentir libre de poser vos questions dans la langue officielle de votre So, Carol, a welcome and happy National Public Service Week, sir. And happy National Public Service Week to you. Merci beaucoup pour l'invitation. It's a nice little break in uh, in my day just to spend some time talking with folks. I appreciate it. Well, we're really happy to have you with us. So thank you for being here. Um, so our conversation today is on leadership during challenging times or difficult times. Uh, and I think we can all agree that the, the past four months have certainly been challenging for, for most of us. Um, first off, Daryl, I want to know how you're doing as, as a public servant and, and a senior leader, but also come on les autres gens uh, à votre niveau, les cadres, um, avec qui vous interagissez? Comment ils um, fonctionnent? Uh, how are senior leaders in general managing uh, these current challenges? Uh, thanks, Michael. You know, in terms of senior leaders, I, I think my, uh, my, and me personally, I'd say we're managing the same as everybody else. Uh, you know, for a lot, for a lot of folks, it's just been a lot of ups and downs. So I'm just going to remind folks to make sure you rem you mute your mic. Um, there's a lot of up, ups and downs, right? Like I remember on the day I had been in Ottawa for, for the full week, came back on Friday, was supposed to return to Ottawa on Sunday night for some more stuff and decided to not to go just because I was a little bit worried about COVID-19, got into the office Monday morning and we were all gone by noon. And um, there's been a lot of ups and downs, right? I think most people have had the same experience that I have in terms of some days are great, some days aren't great. Uh, for me, it's about, you know, we always talk about work-life balance, but to me during this period of time, it's not been about a balance, it's, about a, it's been about a juggle and just trying to figure out how to manage everything. Pour moi, j'ai deux enfants qui sont les adolescents, un a plus vieux que ça, un a presque 20 ans, puis l'autre, vient d'avoir 17 ans la semaine passée, la semaine avant. So for me, it's been great because my teenagers have been stuck with me. So I appreciate the time with them. Uh, now getting them off their phones is another challenge. Uh, my sympathy, I guess, goes up with uh, 
with younger kids, um, you know, how challenging that is to manage working at home. I've been seeing people, um, je suis une personne so sociale, uh, j'aime jazz être dans la cuisine au travail avec mes collègues, avec mon équipe, puis ça c'est quelque chose que, que, que j'aimerais faire encore. So I miss that. Uh, I'm getting fatter for sure uh, because my office has been, my office has moved around a lot. So it's been in my kitchen a lot uh, by my fridge. So that's not, that's not perfect. Just a reminder to folks to please mute your mics. So it's been great, but I just want to say this one last thing. What I really noticed, what's been incredible, has been the amazing innovations. Les innovations qui sont venues depuis on a commencé le, le, le COVID quarantine. Parce que there's just so many things from a technology point of view for how we work with each other perspective. I mean, when would we have done this? Not very often. Um, to a certain respect, it's kind of welcome to my world. And somebody mentioned that to me yesterday. Uh, I'm in a regional office. Uh, I'm in a region and a head office in a region. So I'm always at a distance. But now everybody's at a distance, or most people rather are at a distance. So all of these different IT changes, technology things that, uh, from what I'm seeing, that were always a, an obstacle, we found we found ways to do a lot of them, and that's been truly remarkable. And those of you that heard me talk, I, one of my top ten advice is find a way to say yes. Puis on a trouvé une façon pour dire oui dans plusieurs domaines de travail. Et ça, c'est quelque chose que j'espère qu'on va continuer lorsqu'on retourne, si on va retourner au travail. All right, thank you very much, Daryl. Um, you raise a good point. Um, um, senior leaders, like, uh, like uh, all of us public servants, are going through a lot of the same things, a lot of the same challenges. So, um, so it's uh, it's great to hear. It's great to hear that. Um, I had someone on a call this morning mentioned that they they felt like they were the Maytag repairman, uh, in the fact that they were being quite like they were getting lonely. Um, but I'm actually starting to look like the Maytag repairman because the I'm eating a little bit too much, too close to the fridge. Um, ainsi que qui concerne le leadership, Daryl, quelles sont selon vous les principales choses que les leaders peuvent faire pour soutenir et diriger leurs employés durant cette période imprévisible? What are the top three or four things that leaders should be focusing on right now um, for the foreseeable future? Well, I think I'd say, je me dire premièrement que ce qui était important avant, c'est encore important pour les gestionnaires. And I guess that not to lose sight of that. But particularly, I guess at this time, c'est la santé mentale. Just to see like, how are people doing? You know, you mentioned people being lonely. And, you know, I look at just on my smallish team of, uh, of folks that I talk to, and I've got single parents on my team. I've got folks are home with a, with a bunch of little kids. I've got folks that have aging parents in long-term care facilities, uh, folks that are, you know, single folks at home. And everyone's experiencing this thing differently. So just, you know, serious things like mental health uh, are, are definitely something to think about, but also just the kind of how are you doing, right? Which might not be at the spectrum of a, of a mental illness perspective, but certainly from a mental health perspective. And I'd say I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about kind of everything that's going on in, in, in the world right now with respect to racism and recognizing that in our face. And I'd say our colleagues of uh, that uh, uh, racialized communities, they're experiencing that too. In, in, a, in a very real way. And I think it's important to understand that and, uh, and to have open conversations and to recognize that as an employee, all of these different things are piling up on people. And uh, it's a lot. Um, in terms of a couple of other things, I guess, it's to pay attention to who's busy, who's not. You know, that we, yeah, so, and I look at my team and there are some folks by the nature of their job, this working from a distance, if their job was to move paper and il n'y a pas de papier maintenant, pas dans mon, mon, mon travail, on est tout électronique maintenant, puis si c'était leur poste, ils ne sont pas très occupés. 
Mais il y a des autres personnes qui, ont, qui sont plus occupées que jamais pendant la carrière. So you really need to manage that and help those folks understand and find help for people. For folks that are juggling, uh, you know, outside situations, you've got a house full of kids, whatever, I think it's unrealistic to expect 100% from those people. They just don't have it to give. So it's about being generous and understanding. Encourage people to take time off. You know, that's, that's something that I'm spending a lot of time talking about with my team because people are thinking, now things are starting to open up a bit here in, well, across the country, but certainly here in Atlanta, Canada, where I am. So I think at a certain point, people were thinking, they were a little reluctant to think about vacation because well, where are you going to go? you know, to your backyard, but just not working is important. You know, even if you can go to the, spend some beach days, but just getting away from all this is important. Um, talent management, performance management, equally important. We're in that sort of PMA, EPA review time is kind of happening. So that's still an important thing to pay attention to. And I, I guess I'd say the other thing for, pour tous les gestionnaires de, de penser et de, de considérer de comment on va continuer cette façon de travail à l'avenir. Même si on revient au travail au mois de septembre, décembre, janvier, n'importe quand, on a fait beaucoup de progrès pendant cette période dans, dans la, la, la façon dont on communique, uh, puis uh, how we move things electronically. So I don't, I would really, I, I tell my folks, if we go back to the office and end up working the same way we've worked before, it'll be a huge disappointment, right? There's an expression that says never waste a good crisis. And the positive of COVID-19, quarantine and all of that from a work management perspective for me is I think we advanced probably five years into where public service would have gone from an electronic world. Uh, without being forced into this situation. And obviously communication, uh, I've rambled on a little bit, but I'll, maybe we can come back to that later. So I'm not hearing Michael, am I the only one? Weird, no, I went on mute because my 10 year old walked in the room. <laughs> So that's real life, right? That's everybody's yeah. feeling, right? That's, kids that's right. In, I've seen little, you know, I've seen babies on laps and dogs and yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's the world we're all in now, right? Yeah, so my apologies for that. Um, you talked a lot about communicating and speaking with your staff. And anyone who knows you, Daryl, knows that you're a very engaging leader and manager. Um, uh, and you already addressed, addressed some of the, the key things around communication, but um, how has the current situation affected your own communication strategy? And um, have you des conseils pour, pour aider les gens à maintenir une, une uh, communication ouverte, um, même à distance, virtually? So it's interesting that you say it. I mean, first of all, obviously, you're right, from certainly from my perspective, and that's not unique. Um, communication is key. Like, communication is key for being a good leader, a good manager. I always thought I was a pretty good communicator in terms of keeping my team informed and keeping people in the loop on what was going on and having open dialogue with my staff and all that kind of thing. What I realized in this is because we are so conscious of everyone scattered all over the place, my personal experience with my organization has been we're actually communicating more. We're reaching out to our teams more because we're worried about people not being connected. I have... You know, with my management team, we started out meeting every single day before we met once a week. You know, sh probably shorter meetings because we were all, like many of you, you were dealing with adjusting your operations, writing new programs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we've bumped that down to, to you know, uh, trois fois par semaine. Mais j'étais aussi une personne qui, qui traversait le bureau, puis prend une marche, puis arrête dans un certain bureau juste pour voir ce qui se passe, puis tout ça. And I wasn't doing that. So what I've been doing, what I've done to, re to replace that is having some more one-on-one -on -one meetings, like just sending random one-on-ones with staff members and people that don't report to me directly, like sort of a level down or two, just checking in to say, how are things going? What I hear from my team is the same thing, is that they're actually communicating more 
they're using in their Microsoft Teams or their Zoom or we're using GoToMeeting or we have our inner office IM Skype system, um, which is fantastic. And it's making me think about, okay, why aren't we doing that normally? Like, why aren't I doing that normally? And that's, you know, um, it's forced us to have our meetings to be a lot more efficient. They're shorter, uh, which I love because people that know me, I'm like a red personality, like get to the point and move on. Uh, so that's great for me. Um, although I do miss the casual chit chat that happens, you know, on the margins of meetings and hearing about someone's you know, trip to wherever on the weekend, or of course they're not going anywhere now, but you know, you're hearing stuff, right? Just having that kind of chit chat. I'd say the other thing that we've discovered uh, on, on our team that's important is, I think initially we really went a lot to the video technology, which is super important. And I think it's been a really game changer for how we operate, but sitting here and being on all day is a lot. And so we've actually dialed back a little bit and we have a mixture of calls versus like com traditional conference calls versus video calls. Encourage people to, you know, and I think I saw as people were popping up on the screen, people are outside on their deck and, you know, we encourage people when we're doing just a call, a video, a, a audio call to put on their headphones, go for a walk uh, and try to find those things so you can incorporate some some sort of different practices to make sure people are still kind of, you know, feeling good about, about it all. Right. Um, and, and, and I think, yeah, feel, feeling good about it all sort of sums it up. We're all sort of getting a level of comfort, right. With the technology, with, with having these conversations, um, via, via MS teams or zoom, whatever it might be. So hopefully as we do that more and more, we'll, we'll just get, we'll just get better at it. Um, oh, we mostly are. I mean, we're all, I mean, you were with me the other day when we were doing a, uh, you know, a dry run on this and I was, every call has one of these and I was that guy the other day where I was like, okay, my video doesn't work. Can you hear me? You can't <laughs> see me. Like, and that's just life. Right. But, uh, right. you know, um, it, it's, it's about people feeling connected. And I think to me, it's helping people feel connected, but you also need to leave your house. Like when you're at work, you're not, most people are not 7.5 hours a day at their desk. You get mm -hmm. up, you go to the kitchen, you, you know, you talk to your neighbor. You're, so just to sit here and do stuff wherever you are in your home, it's just not realistic. And uh, so letting people know that that's okay. Right. 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 You spoke on um, a little bit earlier um, about the future. A, um, j'ai récemment lu que en, en 2017, un peu moins de 8% des, des répondants de sondages auprès des fonctionnaires fédéraux um, travaillent, la, travaillent de la maison. Uh, so only 8% of people were working from home. Now it seems that almost everyone who can work from home uh, is working from home. Do you believe that this is the new normal? Uh, what do you think the government of Canada landscape will look like when we come out of this? And how do we prepare for that? It's hard to say. I mean, I guess the first thing that, that I'm observing is il y a une différence entre avant COVID-19 de travailler à la maison, mais maintenant on est à la maison. C'était obligatoire d'être à la maison, même uh, particulièrement au début, when we were on a full-on lockdown. Et on est à la maison et on essaie de travailler en même temps. So it's a little bit different, right? Like, it, when we think of people working from home back in the day, um, for the most part, if your kids are school age, they were at school, uh, or maybe they're at daycare, and or maybe you do have personal circumstances that you need to be home to care for a family member or whatever. In some cases, um, but the reality is different now because everybody's doing it. You know, probably I don't know the stats, but probably like ninety percent of the public service. I don't know, or eighty percent, something like that. Um, so this stuff all works because we're all doing it, right? What that looks like in the future, I think will be interesting to see. Um, we did a little survey of our staff, you know, looking ahead to say, let's, we don't envision us coming back before September. So how many of you, and then it would be phased, like at the very, very earliest. 
And our plan right now would see a phased approach, you know, some percentage would come back and then whatever, right? And out of all of our staff, something like only 24% said they wanted to be part of that first tranche of people going back. Mm-hmm. So that would play into the the the, the prediction que les personnes aimeraient rester à la maison. Puis on sait pas comment on va gérer les écoles avec nos enfants qui vont à l'école à l'automne. Puis ici au Nouveau-Brunswick, euh, je crois que les enfants ne vont pas aller au, à l'école tous les jours. Il y a un arrangement, une jour à la maison, puis un jour au, à l'école. How do we change that? I'm not sure. So I'm hoping we don't have to keep, hoping we can keep this flexibility and we keep using the tools. Um, I do think it will change. Um, there are people that miss being at work. There are people that don't want to be at work. They want to be at home. I'm kind of in the middle. I'm kind of liking this, but I miss people. <laughs> so if I could do this a couple, you know, a few days a week, I'm on the road all the time anyway, so I'm half the time working out of a hotel or working out of an office somewhere else. So it's. I really hope we keep the technologies that we use and we don't start putting a bunch, a bunch of rules around them when we go back. Right. The other thing that I'm super enjoying is I am wearing gym shorts right now. <laughs> and I have not worn pants. That. I have not worn pants with a button or a zipper, I don't think, at all, except for the odd little trip to a store. So um, <laughs> part of me is thinking, why do I wear a suit every day or most days when like I'm I'm doing the same work in my sweatpants? Mm-hmm. So there's there is part of me that's questioning that odd tradition. So yeah. Yeah, you're, you're braver than I am, Daryl. I, I was thinking the exact same thing. I'm wearing shorts right now, um, but I, I didn't have the um, the courage to bring that up. Uh, and I haven't put on long socks in uh, probably two months. Of ankle socks, so I don't know what I'm same. gonna do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, my joke with my team is that if we go back, I need at least a two month warning because I'm not sure my <laughs> pants will fit. So that's that's my other challenge. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I'm in the same boat. I'm scared to try my pants. Um, okay, so we're, we're we're running out of time here. Thank I want to thank you for sharing those insights and tips. And uh, there are there are things that uh, help all managers, I think, and all public servants um, be better leaders. At this time, I'm going to hand it back to Natalie because I see a bunch of questions coming in from our participants. Um, and again, si vous pouvez poser les questions dans la langue officielle de votre choix. Uh, please feel free to ask your questions in the official language of your choice. And I'm going to hand it back to Natalie now. Thank you very much, Daryl. Um, merci beaucoup, Daryl. I, I found your honesty was uh, was awesome to listen to. A nice fresh of breath air on a Thursday afternoon. Alors, merci beaucoup. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have a few questions here. Nous avons quelques questions. Uh, Marise asks us, we hear a lot about taking time off, and I understand the value of that for all of us for our mental health, but what a, what about the routine of a normal or new normal work day or week or work for men, people's mental health? Any thoughts on that? Uh, so that was something that I struggled with at the very beginning. So I had my office set up, my office set up either here in my kitchen island or over my, and what was happening to me was, you know, you kind of, I'm an early riser, so then I turn on my computer, The next thing you know, I'm doing work emails at 6.30 in the morning. And when I'm home alone, my kids shift back and forth to their mums. And when I'm here alone, especially, I'm, you know, I'm doing it at nine o'clock at night. And after it was super crazy the first couple of weeks. And I had to make a conscious effort to just do that and say, okay, this is my routine. So I get up in the morning now, I go for my walk. I do not, I purposely do not pick up my work phone, my, my devices before I do that. Um, because I know then you're sucked in. Um, and at night I shut it at a certain time, right? Like I woke up this morning and I had a text from my minister's office last night at at 10 15, but I had gone to bed and I was like, well, good. I'm glad I didn't see that because I would have been sucked into that vortex, right? At 10 o'clock at night and no one would have been able to help me, which would have been worse because I would have had to do all the answering myself. Uh, but I'm lucky in Atlanta, Canada, I've got an hour in the morning where I can kind of move stuff before she does. I think routine's important. You know, I've started, eat, you know, I eat at a certain time and it, because I think that gives you some normalcy in what is a not normal situation. Exactly. 
Perfect. Thank you. Merci. Uh, another question in French de Fatima. Comment rassurer des employés qui s'inquiètent des coupures en raison de la base du niveau d'activité ou du changement des priorités? C'est une bonne question et euh, c'est quelque chose que je n'ai pas entendu de, de mes employés. Euh, mais moi, je vois que moi, je vois qu'il y a beaucoup de travail à faire. C'est juste une question de gérer les priorités et gérer la recherche de travail. Um, je n'ai pas vraiment une bonne réponse parce que, comme j'ai dit, ce n'est pas quelque chose qui, qui, qui est la réalité de mon, de, de ma, mon ministère. Alors, uh, j'aimerais juste assurer qu'on a assez de travail à faire et uh, on va, ce qu'on doit faire comme gestionnaire, c'est essayer de, de, de changer les distributions de travail parce que, les personnes qui sont très occupées, comme j'ai mentionné tantôt, puis les autres personnes qui sont peut-être pas si occupées. Et euh, on doit être flexible, que on doit gérer la vie personnelle, même pendant la journée de travail. Ça, c'est la réalité qu'on voit. Alors, peut-être les autres personnes peuvent aider les personnes qui sont à la maison avec leurs enfants, par exemple. C'est un pretty trite answer, mais uh, c'est une bonne question. Merci beaucoup. Uh, third question, Deborah asks, how do you manage varying workloads for members of your team? Some members of my team need access to the lab, whereas others can more easily work on files remotely. And how do you balance that? Hmm, that's a great question. That's not my reality. I mean, I guess, you know, because we don't, none of us actually need to be at work. In my, in my job, everyone can work from home. Um, So I, I, I honestly can't give you a good answer in terms of the, the managing the who goes in and who doesn't because in my, my mind just goes right to, well, we'll just need to schedule it. But obviously you're a smart person and you've thought of that part already. Um, but in terms of managing workload, uh, I'm just really trying to mix it up and trying to bring people in on special projects a lot is something I've been doing. Like the people that maybe aren't as busy, if you will, try to carve off a piece of work because their file isn't as hot right now. Uh, and I've assigned them some special projects and allowed them to pitch in on stuff. So it's actually been a great opportunity for them, for some of them to show some real leadership. And there's some people that I'd say weren't on my radar, honestly, that I, I didn't know a lot about them that have really shone because they've taken on some of this stuff. Uh, the logistics of bringing people in and out. Uh, sorry, I, I, I really just... I just don't have an answer to that one. That's perfectly fine. It's okay. There's a few other questions, but I think we're, we're, we're almost at the end. There's about two minutes left. Um, Come on, give me, some more, give me a couple okay, questions. Okay, 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 okay. I'll give you one. Uh, there was a question here. Um, uh, how do you motivate a virtual team? Comment motivez-vous une équipe virtuelle? Which is something that we, we, we talk about all the time. But how would you? I mean, I think it's communica uh, communication is number one keeping people informed. I think especially in this environment, people want to know what's going on, both in terms of your work. Uh, people want to know what you know about uh, when are we coming back to work and what do you know about that? Even if you know nothing, you need to tell them that. We've been trying to incorporate a lot of fun stuff. I know my staff in Ottawa have a, have a coffee break, a Zoom coffee break every Friday morning. Uh, for Public Service Week, our agency, we did a little had initiated a trivia challenge with this tool called Kahoot. If anyone hasn't tried it, it's cool. So we had like little regional competitions and then the top four people in each region formed a team, a four person team, and then we competed against each other. So trying to do stuff like that, uh, we're doing like photo challenge. And so trying to make it a little bit fun too, but really celebrating the successes has been critical for us because Like many of you, when we're on a on a COVID project, for example, people are working insane hours, and um, congratulating them, recognizing their work, and uh, really encouraging people to take time off. You know, that's something that to to basically reward them and thank them, but also to make sure they're rested because I'm coming at them with something else probably next week. So. <laughs> You're not like that, are you? No. Um, Staff would say I am, but yeah. yeah. And we have definitely we have a bit more time than I thought. For some reason, I thought we were at the end of the of the 40 minutes, but we still have about five plus minutes. So, 
continue with the questions. On va continuer avec les questions. Uh, question de Ivan. Um, how would a leader communicate the risk involved in returning to work at the workplace in situations where information is just not enough? Not sure I totally understand the question. Um, you know, the I know. Involved in returning to work at the workplace. So, yeah, like how. The okay, well, I believe, look, yeah. I'll, I'll just tell you what my thoughts are as a leader in terms of the whole learning, learning, returning to work thing, right? We're informing people about, you know, what our plan is, right? And right now, a big part of our plan is just to make a plan. Like, we're figuring, everyone's figuring this out as we go, right? But we are doing things like, um, uh, in, in that plan will be things like you're seeing in public spaces, arrows on the floor on where you need to walk, um, you know, PPE, you know, masks and, and sanitizing and all that in places where, um, where um, people can't social distance. Uh, we're going to be, you know, having staff, we won't be filling all of our cubicles, you know, we'll be filling every second cubicle uh, at most. Um, so trying to structure things in a way that kind of forces the behavior uh, for people, if you will. Um, I'm like a huge believer in, you know, I think it was Dan Levy had put the post on Instagram. Some people had seen where he said, think about wearing a mask as the most generous thing you can do for somebody else. And that's a message that I'm trying to, is a lot of this protective behavior. It's not about me and it's not about you. It's about the person that we're with, you know, or the person that you might run into. And, uh, you know, people are going to do what they're going to do. And some people will buy into that and some people won't. Wow. I think to say that, that sounded like let them do whatever. But when you get to the workplace, there's going to be rules and you're going to have to follow them with respect to safety. And if you can't follow those, then we'll go down roads where figuring out, you know, you can't be. Right? There's definitely going to be a whole new set of parameters mm -hmm. and, and things to deal with once we go back to work, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, another question from Christy. Um, how do you adjust expectations from executives who seem to be online all the time? Alors, comment uh, rencontrer ou ajuster les, les, les attentes des exécutifs qui sont en ligne toujours um, without, with various priorities? It almost feels like managers are obligated to stretch to extreme levels, especially when working remotely, to make it seem like we're contributing and pulling our own weight. So that a little bit relates to the example that I just talked about for me putting my rules in place, right? Of course, easy for me, I'm the ADM, right? So I only have one person. Well, I have a minister's office um, who uh, I explained to you that I didn't answer last night. Um, but that's kind of the thing, I think, is you you need to set your own boundaries and you need to be thinking about what your contribution is. And it can't, we can't define it by hours online and answering every email. Um, worse, you know, if it, if it comes to if that, it's a real problem then I think having an open conversation with your, with your manager about it, like, you know, I'm, I'll do what I can. I'll, I'm when I'm working on a hot file, I think most of us that we're working on, working on emergency COVID things are have been expected at times to work weekends and work evenings and because that's what was was required of us um, and that's understandable from time to time but it's not manageable it's not sustainable uh, so I think finding the boundaries that work for you um, you know without being a total uh, slacker and not responding to everything that you're you know to anything that your boss wants you to do but you know be comfortable that you have the right to have a life um, because it, it it never stops right if you answer every time they're gonna keep messaging you right so you're reinforcing like Pavlov's dogs right but if the eyes and ADM send you a message at nine o'clock at night and you answer me back I'm gonna be like oh here's my chance right so uh, I need to have the discipline to not do that and I need to have the discipline to not feed that to, to, to like, I'm blessed. My boss would never do that. I, you know, he's, he's, he's amazing, but um, yeah, I think it's about kind of setting your own boundaries. And if it's problematic, actually having a conversation with your boss, because I think most executives would understand. 
probably the last question. We'll see. We'll see where we're at. Um, une question en français. Pensez-vous qu'il y a un risque d'une fracture numérique de la fonction publique fédérale suite à la pandémie de COVID-19? Fracture numérique, ça veut dire les couverts? Je dirais peut-être une surcharge de, de technologie ou une surcharge de, de toujours être en ligne. De, et que, comme, comment moi je l'interprète? OK. Digital um, gap is what they said. So pardon me? A fracture numérique, so do you think there will be a, a digital gap? Ben, il y a toujours un digital gap, si je puis dire, uh, au gouvernement, je crois, parce que on n'est pas capable, on est trop grand d'avancer de, de si vite que le secteur privé ou les petites et moyennes entreprises, par exemple. Uh, mais je dois dire que je suis vraiment impressionné avec le travail que nos collègues à uh, uh, Service Partagé Canada ont fait pendant la pandémie. Uh, on est capable d'avoir les zooms. À mon ministère, lorsqu'on a commencé, on ne pouvait pas avoir même tous les employés sur VPN en même temps. Puis ça a changé après une coupe de jours, je crois, ou une semaine peut-être. Um, alors, comme j'ai mentionné au, au début, je crois qu'on a avancé uh, cinq ans, que, like, five years, what, what we did in a few weeks would have normally taken us five years, c'est ça que je veux dire. Alors, uh, mais c'est quelque chose qu'on doit continuer à travailler là-dessus. We try to keep pushing on that and uh, working closely with our colleagues, uh, nos collègues go au service uh, Partager Canada, but really a shout out to you folks. You've really done a, a stand-up job, I think, uh, and, and, and it's a real pleasure to to be served by that. Merci. Um, we're mm -hmm. running out of time, so I believe uh, we are going to uh, go towards um, the closing. Thank you very much, Daryl. Merci beaucoup, Daryl. Um, you had a few mm -hmm. difficult questions there. Vous aviez quelques questions un peu... <laughs> <laughs> un peu challenging, uh, mm -hmm. mais merci de votre réponse. Puis uh, je vais maintenant céder la parole à Michael mm -hmm. pour les mots. Can I, just, can I just say something quick before yeah. we wrap? Because it's, a, mm -hmm. just, it's, and it's from, from really from the heart. And I just want to say to all of you out there, and uh, you know, there's probably folks from every kind of department. Um, mm -hmm. This is a trim, an amazing moment of shine for the Can Public Service of Canada. It is, I am, I am blown away every day by what I'm seeing, you know, in the early days when I watch, you know, the prime minister come out in front of his cottage and talk about the, the new programs that were being launched, you know, through ESDC or CRA or whoever, as a, uh, as a public servant, I have appreciation for all that's behind that, right from the finance folks, the treasury board folks, to the technical folks, to the program folks, to the policy folks, and every single one of our programs and services has been impacted by this. Some more than others, uh, but the, the things that you've been able to turn out and, 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 and adapt, all while you're adapting your own personal and professional lives is truly, truly remarkable. And honestly, as a Canadian, I just wanna say, Thank you, merci beaucoup. It's it's really been a shining moment for the public service, and I'm just so proud to be part of your team. That's it. <laughs> wow, Daryl. Uh, oh, thank you. Me. Sorry, I was just going to say um, uh, thank you so much, Daryl, for that. Uh, your team's certainly very lucky to have you as their, as their leader. Um, and I want to thank all our participants for joining us today as we mark National Public Service Week. And this is certainly a period when we should all be very proud, I think, for adjusting um, to the changes we've, we've faced over the past um, several weeks. Um, uh, and again, Daryl, merci pour, pour, pour avoir um, pris la, le temps pour uh, être avec nous aujourd'hui et répondre à nos à questions et partager vos connaissances et, et vos conseils. Um, we're all better off for it. Uh, the information, the tools you share will definitely help us and all public servants try to lead ourselves and lead our teams through, um, through the um, weeks and months to come. Uh, I also want to thank Natalie for, uh, for leading us through today's conversation. Natalie did a great job. Thank you. And to all my teammates at the NMC for coordinating this event. 
especially for the Atlantic Canada music that led us into uh, into our start at two o'clock. That was fantastic. I was doing a little jig in the living room. Um, so again, thank you, Daryl. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to hand it back to Natalie just to close us off. I have one more thing to say, if I can. Yeah. I just wanted. To, I also wanted to take this opportunity. Um, as a really proud gay public servant, to wish Happy Pride to, yes. my, to all of my uh, to all of my fellow public servants. Well done, Daryl. Sorry, I was amiss for not mentioning it. Okay, well, that's my people, so I have to say it. So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Mike. Merci, Daryl. Merci, Mike. Tout le monde qui ont participé pour être là. Merci également. Um, especially for Michael for guiding us through this important conversation. Et encore un grand merci à Daryl for being with us today and sharing your, your wonderful insights. We at the NMC hope you will join us next Thursday when we welcome our very dynamic and engaging Deputy Minister Champion Christine Donahue and our host Jonathan Labelle in a discussion on failures that bloom, les échecs qui épanouissent. This discussion will be an opportunity to raise awareness that everybody makes mistakes and the importance of learning from them. Cette discussion est une occasion de sensibiliser au fait que tout le monde fait des erreurs et à l'importance d'apprendre de ceci. You can follow the NMC at our Twitter handle at NMC underscore CNJ for all updates and registration details. Until then, best wishes and bonne fin de journée. À la prochaine. Take care. Bye.